presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Shanghai Lil won Jungle Jim's admiration as a skillful flyer when she threw the purple triangle plane off her trail by faking a spin. Then she flew above her former pursuers and shot them down in flames. Later on a steamship bound for Shanghai, Lin Chalmers reported to her father that she overheard a Chinese voice declare Jungle Jim was dead. Despite the Reverend's warning against eavesdropping, Lin left their cabin to find out what happened to Jim. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. The boat carrying the Reverend Chalmers and his daughter steams toward Shanghai. Lin spies the purser coming along the deck and decides to do a little sleuthing before going back to the door of cabin 307. Oh, purser. Good evening, Miss Chalmers. Something I can do to make you and your father more comfortable? Thank you, but everything's fine so far. I didn't want to ask you for any more service, just some information. Oh, certainly, Miss. What did you wish to know? I saw a Chinese at dinner tonight who interested me. My steward told me he occupies cabin 307. Could you tell me who he is? 307. 307, oh, I see. Oh, of course. Yes, it's Lin Pu. Prince Lin Pu. He traces his ancestry back to the first rulers of the earliest dynasty. He does? Oh, yes. You wouldn't think it to look at him, would you? No, I should say not. The young ladies are accustomed to thinking of princes. He's quite a romantic-looking young man. Tall, slender, handsome, not fat, and, well, shall we say, unattractive. Unattractive is putting it much too mildly. Repulsive is the only word that describes Lin Pu. Then may I ask why you're so interested in him? Why, because... Because he is so repulsive looking. And because he's traveling first cabin. Well, Lin Pu has plenty of money. And I'm sure I don't know where he gets it. He never seems to have any business connections. But he travels on our line quite a bit. Well, a prince usually is wealthy, isn't he, Purser? A regular up-to-date prince, yes. But never a prince in name only. Bless you, Miss. While Lin Pu is really a prince as far as lineage goes... It doesn't mean a thing today, because China is no longer a monarchy. So that's it. That's why... Hey, I beg your pardon? That's why what? Nothing, Purser. Thank you. You've more than satisfied my womanly curiosity. Oh, very good, miss. Good night, miss. Good night, Purser. Well, Mr. Lin Poo, I want to find out how you happen to know so much about Jungle Jim. Cabin 307, here I come. Meanwhile, Shanghai Lil's plane carrying Jim and Kolo roars on along the China coast. Suddenly, Lil's voice is heard over the headset. Jim, look down there. What city is that, Lil? Either Wen Chow or Ning Po. Tell you in a minute. Say, we sure haven't wasted any time. Won't be long now, Kolo. We all seem glad to one, Jim. <laughs> oh, I'll bet you are. Well, Kolo, remember you asked to come along with me. Yes, yes, Juan. Kolo, no. Me all seem glad to come. All same glad go down earth some more. To tell you the truth, Kolo, I'll be darn glad myself. I'm nearly crazy with the suspense, waiting to find out what the consul at Shanghai wants with me. Jim, that was Ning Po. We're coming to the Bay of Hangzhou. We'll be over it in a minute. Good. It can't show up too soon for me. That means we're almost at Shanghai. That's right, Jim. What's the plan, Lil, after we get there? We'll land at the airport and go straight from there to the foreign settlement. That suits me fine. There's Hangzhou Bay down there. Yes, sir, and does it look good, too? Uh, what's that island over there, do you know? The big one right under us now is called Chusan Island. That's the only charted island on my map, so don't ask me anything more about Ireland. Okay. But there's plenty about the Purple Triangle business that I want to ask you. You know, I've been trying to figure it out ever since we left Burawani, but it just doesn't add up to anything. Tell me what it's all about, will you? You'll find out for yourself before long, Jim. Yeah, I know. But it may be pleasanter and a whole lot less trouble if you tell me. I can't tell you 
any more than I have already. You said you knew all about the Purple Triangle Gang. That's right. I do. Then why can't you tell me what you know? I can't tell you that either. There's a special reason. You'll have to take my word for it. Yeah, I guess I will. When you won't talk, you won't talk. I found that out. I say this much, Jim. It's a good thing we prevented those Purple Triangle Scouts from getting back to the Master Prince. I don't suppose there's any use in my asking why. No, you'll just have to take my word for that, too. Uh Oh, say... uh... What are you going to do with your bat kingdom, Lil? I just happened to think of it. I don't know exactly what I'll do. Maybe I'll find another overseer to take Jack LeBar's place. Go ahead from where I left off. <laughs> you won't if the Reverend Chalmers has anything to say about it. Oh, he won't have anything to say. If I make up my mind to start up the bat kingdom again. Juan Jim, no can see water down there. Water all seems gone. What? Well, I'll be darned. You're right, Cole. It looks like we're above the clouds. Lil. Yes? I didn't notice we were climbing. What's our altitude now? We haven't been climbing. What gave you that idea? I can't see the Bay of Hangzhou anymore. It's all covered by clouds. Good heavens, that's not clouds, Jim. That's fog. Huh? If it doesn't break up, we're liable to fly right over Shanghai and lose our way. Keep your eyes open for the first sight of an opening in the fog. We will. Kolo, look, look on your side. Be sure to tell me the minute you see land or water. All right, Juan Jim. Me look, look. I'm flying by the instrument. Can I take my eyes off the panel? See anything but that terrible fog? Not on my side. What do you see, Kolo? All same here. Nothing. Kolo can't see a thing on his side either, Lil. I'll have to take a chance and drop down a little way. Here goes. Any sign of Shanghai now? Not yet. Kolo! Can you see land? No, Juan Jim. All same here. Only see sky. There doesn't seem to be any break in the fog yet, Lil. Keep looking, Jim. We ought to be almost over Shanghai now. We mustn't miss it. I'm watching closely, Lil. What are you going to do? Go lower? I don't dare. No telling how low the fog is hanging. I'm going to keep on my course and trust the luck that it will burn off enough to show us where we are. Here's hoping your luck is good. How's the gasoline holding out? I've just changed to the emergency tank. We had enough to get us to Shanghai. But in this fog... Let's talk about something else. Know any funny stories? One Jim, look, look. Uh, what is it, Colo? Sky open. Look, look. So it is. Lil, Lil. What is it, Jim? There's a hole in the fog now. Look down, quick. That's Shanghai below us. Hooray, we've made it. Save the celebrating until later. Look down now. And the fog's closed in again. Lil, what are we going to do? Circle around until it burns off? I hope not. But I'll circle, circle around until I can get on the beam of the airport and get them to guide us down. Take your headset, Jim. I'm going to tune in my two-way radio now. Can't talk to you for a while. Calling Shanghai Airport. Calling Shanghai Airport. Calling Shanghai Airport. Can you hear me, Shanghai? I need your help to guide me in. Can you hear me, Shanghai? Where are you, Shanghai? Answer me. Meanwhile, on the boat bound for Shanghai, the Reverend Chalmers hears his cabin door opened. Lin, is that you, Lin? Nein, this isn't your daughter. This is your doctor. Oh, I must have dropped off to sleep for a minute. She just went out, and I thought she was coming back. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling tonight, Reverend? Better, I think. Thank you, doctor. That is good. We want you to feel better all the time. Well, we just turn on the light here and see for ourselves. Uh, doctor, is my watch going? Is it that time? Why, yes, sure, certainly. But where could my daughter be? She left nearly an hour ago to go up on deck. She said she'd be right back. Haven't you seen her up there? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't been up on deck all evening. Oh, I wonder what could have happened to her. Oh, you mustn't get so excited, my dear Urban. It isn't good for your sickness. You must be calm. No, no, you don't understand. 
She heard a Chinese plotting a revolution. Is that so? Here, let me see your tongue. Doctor, doctor, you must go search the ship for her. Heaven only knows what may have happened to her. Now, now, now. Tea, get easy, Reverend. No doubt she has met one of those handsome young officers and they are talking in the moonlight. No, 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 no. She's in danger, I tell you. I have a feeling that my daughter is in danger. That Chinese. I can't remember his name. He's a revolutionary. And he'll stop at nothing. What cabin does he occupy? Uh, Lynn told me that, too. She said it was... Uh, it was... Uh... I can't remember now. But I know she's in danger. You must have had a bad dream, Reverend. Here, take one of these tablets. It will put you to sleep so you won't have any more bad dreams. No, it was no bad dream, Doctor. I'm telling you exactly what happened. She heard this Chinese talking about overthrowing the government now that Jim Bradley is dead. Yeah, yeah, of course. Good. Arthur, come in here, please. Yes, Doc. I'm afraid I am going to need a little help. All of my patients leave while I prepare the hypodermic. Yes, Doc. You think I'm delirious, but I'm not, Doctor. I'm telling you the truth. My daughter is in danger. All right, Stuart. Hold him down while I give him this hypodermic to put him to sleep. While at that very moment in cabin 307, a fat, repulsive-looking Chinese is in a huddle with a fellow countryman. So, my friend, you think our revolution cannot fail, eh? That is right, Lin Po. You may be right. It is indeed gratifying to know Jungle Jim Bradley is at bottom of sea. And now is our chance, Lin Po. Perhaps. If Mark Blintz agrees with us, my friend... You must remember, we cannot move without his approval and order. But, Lin Po... There are no buts, my friend. We cannot act without orders from leader. Mask Plintz alone knows exact moment to strike first blow. He is all-powerful, all-wise. He... What was that? I heard nothing, Lin Po. We are being spied upon. Give me that gun. There is someone outside door. Watch. You may be light, my friend. Perhaps the time has come, as you say. Oh! Uh, begging pardon, Missy. <laughs> but eavesdropping is most unhealthy. I wasn't even... I suggest you step in here. But I only... Quiet. I have you covered with the gun, Missy. I assure you, it will be most unfortunate if you cause me to use it. Step into this cabin. What is going to happen to Lynn Chalmers? Is she in the hands of the Purple Triangle Gang? The dramatization you have just heard was based on incidents pictured in full-color action pictures of Jungle Jim appearing in the Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the Comic Weekly, there is a feature called Heroes of American History. It pictures the careers of great men and women in the story of our country. You will also find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's Bringing Up Father, The Little King, Skippy, Barney Google, Toots and Casper, The Cats and Yammer Kids, and many, many others. Don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. <laughs>